This is Sindam Patel and welcome back to the video lecture series of the fundamentals of machine design. In this lecture, we are going to learn about the shaft design of the shaft and different theoretical portions that are required to be covered in the theories of the shaft. Different terms that you need to know before starting the example or the application of the shaft. You must know those terms and that's why this lecture is going to be very important for you uh, to understand the exam example pro procedure in the upcoming lectures. So we will start our lecture with the theoretical portion of the shaft and uh, those theoretical portion is nothing but the introduction of the shaft. The shaft is a rotating machine element which is used to transmit the power from one place to another place. So if you want to transmit the power from one place to another place, you can simply rotate the shaft and transmit the power from one to another end of the shaft. Thus power is delivered by to the shaft by some tangential force. We all know that in order to rotate the shaft you will require a tangential force and uh, the resultant torque or the twisting moment set up within the shaft permits the power to be transmitted for, for to various machines linked up to the shaft. So it is possible to, uh, uh, to link different mach machines in the series with the same shaft when you are rotating the same shaft with the some with some amount of the speed then the different machines can draw the power from the similar shaft which is also known as a line shaft. In order to transmit the power from the one shaft to another uh, various members such as the pulleys, gears etc are mounted on it. So if you want to transmit the power from one to another shaft we are not talking about the one end to another end of the shaft we are talking about the power transmission from the one shaft to another another shaft and then in that particular case you can utilize the different materials or different components like the gear and the pulleys and different other components like the couplings and other things. Uh, these members along with the forces exerts them upon them causes the shaft to bending and uh, the shaft may fail due to the bending. In other words, we may say that the shaft is used for the transmission of the torque and the bending moment. The various members are mounted on the shaft by means of the keys and the spline. What is key? We have just covered the, those particular lectures in the previous sessions and if you do not know those terms then you must refer that particular lectures that we have already uh, published in the previous, uh, previous videos. So by, uh, by with this uh, we are going to introduce the material used for the shaft. So the material used for the shaft should have the following properties. You must understand the, what are the properties that the shaft is needed. After that you can select the material based on their properties and first properties that is the most in the shaft is that it should have the high strength. If the shaft is not having the enough strength then it will fail during the rotation or power transmission or the torque transmission which is undesirable. Second property is it should have the good machinability. And now if you are utilizing or if you are producing a shaft then you must know that the diameter of the shaft is the crucial part for the assembly of the, in any mach machine as well as the shaft center or the axis uh, must not have the eccentric uh, mass distribution which will cause the uh, vibration in, uh, during the working of the shaft and that's why it is very important to use the material that allows the machinability of the uh, that allows the more machinability of the shaft because due to the machinability you will be able to uh, adjust that particular uh, excess material from the shaft or you can get the better accuracy of the material in terms of the dimensions. Now the third property that you need to understand is that it should have the good heat treatment property or it, it should have the low north sensitivity factor. Now the heat treatment properties are vital whenever you are utilizing the shaft to transmit the high power or the high torque when the uh, strength uh, of the normal material would be not enough. In that particular case you will have to en enhance the strength of the material by the different processes like the heat treatment and uh, quenching processes. So it should have the high wear resistance, uh, high wear resistant property. If your shaft is not having the wear resistant property it its life will be shorter and you will require to uh, you will be required to uh, change the shaft intermediately with the uh, frequently with the working of the shaft 
so it is not desirable to disassemble the whole machine just to uh, replace the shaft uh, frequently uh, uh, and during the uh, production it we it may cause the economy of the production and that's why it is it is uh, necessary to have the wear resistant material used for the shaft and based on those properties we can uh, easily identify few materials like the carbon steel and different grades of the carbon steels are uh, explained in this particular table where you will see the 40c8 45c8 50c4 and 50c12 different grades are there available and uh, the chemical composition with their strength are also available in the reference books like this so the me mechanical properties of those grades of the carbon steel are given in the following table as you can see the table contains the ultimate tensile strength and the yield strength of the of the shaft based on the requirement of the working condition so we can identify the requirement and based on the requirement we may select the any material from the table or any different material based on their properties but you must see those properties before selecting the material okay so this was the basic uh, definition and the theory of the shaft now we will see the different terms regarding the shaft like the shaft usually uh, uh, the shaft itself the second one is an axle and the third one is the spindle so we are going to understand the shaft first the shaft are usually cylindrical but may be square or as cross shaped in the section and they are solid in the cross uh, cross section but sometimes hollow shafts are also used based on the requirement if you do if you need to if you require the shaft which is with very less weight then you can go for the hollow shaft and hollow shafts are also good for the proper uh, for the different uh, section modulus and that's why uh, they may be the good choice against a solid shaft whenever the section modulus uh, within the range is required an axel though similar in the shape to the shaft is a stationary machine element and is used for the transmission of the bending moment only and it simply act as a support for some rotating body such as the hoisting drum car wheel or rope shoe so it will act like a supporting member only which is required to uh, to transmit the bending moment through the shaft the spindle is a short shaft that imparts the motion either to a cutting tool or a working piece for example you will see this type of a spindle in the drill drill place where it rotates the drill bit uh, uh, as a cutting tool and you will find the lathe spindle to rotate the work piece in the chuck so these are the different uh, different uh, uh, terminologies that you need to understand before understanding the types of the staff so the types of the shaft contains the two different types that is the transmission shaft and the machine shaft the transmission shaft itself indicates that the transmit it, this shaft transmit the power between the source and the machine absorbing the power the counter shaft the line shaft overhead shaft and all the factory shaft are the transmission shaft since those shafts carry the machine parts such as the pulley and the gear etc therefore they subjected to a bending in addition to twisting so you whenever you are designing this type of a shaft then you must con con uh, consider combined bending and twisting stresses uh, uh, twisting effect uh, while the designing of the shaft the machine shaft are uh, from an integral integral parts uh, of the machine itself the crank shaft is an example of the machine shaft so we have seen the different types of the shaft now we will see another theory or that is the standard sizes of the transmission shaft the standard sizes can be uh, uh, considered or selected in the different steps so during the between the 25 mm to 60 mm uh, uh, 5 mm step is considered as a standard so if you are if you want to find out the different shaft with the standard sizes between the 25 to 60 and you must skip the 5 5 mm uh, and get the next uh, dimension for example if you if you are finding the next dimension after 25 then the next standard size will be 30 after that 35 40 45 50 the similarly up to the 60 you will get uh, different dimensions in multiple of the 5 then uh, if you want to design the shaft diameter between the 60 to 110 then you will get the dimension or the uh, steps of the 10 mm so your uh, standard sizes will be in the multiple of the 10 
uh, if you are designing your shaft between the 110 to 140 mm then your step size will be 15 mm for the 140 to 500 mm the step size will be 20 mm so different types of a step size available and uh, based on the step step size you can directly uh, easily uh, design the shaft on based on the uh, standard sizes the asme core the asme core is an uh, according to american society of mechanical engineers is the full form of the asme core uh, will provide the uh, few allowances and a few uh, uh, provisions to design the shaft for example, uh, 112 megapascal for the shaft without the allowance for the keyway can be considered as a uh, tension and a compression working stress. So, if the keyway is uh, with the with allowance of the keyway, you can consider it as a 84 megapascal. So, if you do not know the uh, purchase a shaft under definite physical specification, the permissible tensile stress may be taken as a 60 percent of the elastic limit of the in the tension or uh, not more than the 36 percent of the ultimate tensile strength. In other words, the permissible tensile stress is sigma t equals to 0.6 times sigma elastic or 0.36 times sigma ultimate, whichever is less. We need to consider the lesser value. Similarly, for the shear stress, the two allowances, if the allowance for the keyways is not considered, then you can consider the permissible shear stress as a 56 megapascal. And if you consider the allowance for the keyway, then your uh, maximum shear stress will be 42 megapascal. Now, if you consider, if you want to find out the permissible shear stress from the elastic stress, uh, elastic stress and the ultimate stress, then your shear stress would be 0.3 times the sigma elastic or 0.18 times sigma ultimate, whichever is less. So, based on that, we are going to see the design of the shaft. The design of the shaft contains the two different criteria and the first one is the strength and the second one is the rigidity. Based on the strength, we are going to see the first criteria that is the shaft subjected to the twisting moment only. And for the twisting moment, the torsion equation T by J equals to tau by R is used. For using this equation, we are going to derive the equation of the basic shaft and that is the equation which is represented by in this diagram like this. So, uh, we know the for the solid shaft j is equals to pi, pi by 32 d raised to 4. If you put the values of the j into this equation, then you will simplify the equation and get the answer like this. This is our basic equation which can be utilized for the calculation of the shaft. And if you are using the hollow shaft, your j value would be like this. And if you put this value in the equation, then your calculation, after the calculation, you will get the final answer like this. Okay, so this was the uh, basic method using which we are going, we were you, uh, going to calculate our basic dimension of the shaft. The, for the marine shaft, uh, you, can, you can go with this calculation where the k term is introduced for the D, ratio of the di and do and uh, with this we, uh, we are going to see the different uh, uh, twisting moment uh, uh, power and the torque calculation equation. The power can be calculated using the uh, this equation that is the 2 pi nt by 60 and uh, from this equation you can calculate the torque t if power is provided. You can calculate the torque t from t1 minus t2 into r also if the belt drive is used or a pulley is used to transmit the power. So, these were the different equations and based on which you can calculate your examples of the shaft which we will cover in the upcoming lecture. Thank you.